Hello everyone. I am back. I am trying to catch up with Lisa on Lisa My Eclectic Life and the lap book that she's been making. Um, she had, I had been doing a, the same things in my way every time and the last couple of weeks I was gone and did not get to make my parts and pieces. I also have to make my parts and pieces just a little different than Lisa does because my books are smaller and I don't have as many books. Um, so I there was a couple of things that I'm not going to do and I'll tell you why. Part of it is she did some really cute stacked and, and twisted pockets but her books are bigger than mine and it, the pockets were going to be so tiny I decided to leave them out. Um, so that particular element is not going to be in my book. However, she put in her uh, Midori style elastics in here in the center of her book. And I wanted to do that too. I'm going to put those in. I will put them in at a later date. I just want to show you the file folders we're going to make today. These are folders that will actually go here in the center. But yet will come out because they'll be on elastics. Um, Lisa made these fun angled pockets. Let me find something to tuck in there. This will do. Um, there's a pocket here and a pocket here. And then she made these fun little stacked pockets and I made those as well. So all of these are pockets. And then this is another angled one. Now I believe she actually put these in her book, um, actually right down to her book. I'm not sure. I can't remember, frankly. Um, but I had to put them in a file folder, which is going to go in my Midori area. So that will be put in with an elastic band. And then secondly, um, I'm, I wanted to make a couple of these. So I Again, I, I stacked my pockets, but I did them a little different um, so that I could make them work in my book. Um, this is a big pocket, but then there are two smaller pockets in here. And then these are envelopes, but yet they have pocket space behind them. Like so. So then when you get back over here, so you can get to those pockets right here. Or we have another set of stacked ones. I just had to do my stacked pockets a little bit different. Anyways, this is what we're going to make today. Um, this is what I'm making right today for my lap book with Lisa. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Have fun watching. See you at the end. Okay, um, I used legal size file folders. They're the right height when cut in half. And while they're a little bit long to use just one piece, they will work for a couple of things I have in mind. Uh, I have been doing this collaged book pages. I'm using four different books because of the color of the books pages, not because of the... Um, uh, anything special about the the books they're just the, the ages of them make them different colors and I'm just trimming here off the excess I don't worry about the edges I just go ahead and put it over the edges and go from there um, I needed to measure to see exactly how tall and I do have flaps on the tops of those um, file folders or the tabs are on the file folders and so there's a couple of them that are going to stick out the top a little bit but I had to worry about what where my elastics were going to come so I here I am I'm going to I ended up having to flip this around a couple times because the bottom edge where I cut it with the scissors is not straight and I knew that I just should have thought about it now I am just um, scoring 
that right there because that eventually will turn into a pocket. And honestly, a couple of these folders that you see me folding right here, I didn't use today. Um, they're going to be used next time. I wasn't, it, it got, this video got very long and I decided I would need to um, break it up into a couple of sessions. So, of course, the cutter didn't cut. I found it easier. I was having trouble scoring that to the right distance, so I ended up just using the ruler. It worked way better. The one thing about a lap book and about doing something with old book covers, the kinds of things that we're doing, is that you have to work on your own measurements because every set of books you're going to use are a little different. My two books that I'm using for this project are both the same height, but the spines are different. So I have different amounts of space in them. And then I added the big spine in the middle. So, you know, everyone's measurements are going to be a little bit different. Um, it just so happens that with the tabs, for the most part, the file folders are going to be just fine. Um, now, see, I'm just cutting that one off. It's going to be just folded in half. So you kind of have to decide what it is you're going to do, how you're going to do it. There again, I came up with an edge that wasn't real straight, so I had to straighten things out. Now, a couple of these, because of the way the pocket's gone on the inside, um, oh, that's where my book page decided to separate just a little bit. A couple of my books are very old and very brittle. Uh, they're they don't like to fold, and that must have gotten a little too close to that fold. Okay, I was checking. I have all these little parts and pieces. I did use them later to make the stacked pockets, but for these six little pockets that are all the same, I ended up needing a new sheet. And what I have done there is I have just covered some cardstock with my book paper just to have it already ready. Because of the way I'm doing mine, I can't just make it with the cardstock and then add the, the paper later. I have to get that paper down before I start cutting things up because it's just... The collage part of it is just too hard. So here I am cutting up all my little pieces. These little six pockets are all the same size. And they are just set on there just like that. So I was double checking the size of them. Um, I just cut all six out of the same sheet of cardstock that had my collaged pieces on top of it. I'd get a new blade for my cutter, except that it it doesn't always do that. And I think it's because of the multiple layers. And I rounded all the corners because... I thought they would look better if they were all rounded. And then I'm going to take my one inch. Oh, I decided that if I was going to do the heavier corner, I better um, use my new fancy corner chomper. I've broken the little um, the little corner rounder, the black the one with the black handle on it that you saw. I have broken two of them now, so. Um, 
I went ahead and got myself the heavier corner rounders for heavier things. Uh, what I'm doing there is just marking the centers. I wanted them reasonably in the center and I have a one inch circle punch and I'm just ch chomping out a little tiny piece of the circle. And now you're going to sit and watch me ink stuff. Sorry about that. Um, one of the things I will tell you is that I use a lot of stays on ink because that's what I had uh, as far as permanent ink. I like stays on ink, um, but it eats those foam sponges uh, that are on the dauber. Um, it just chews it up. It, it's the the solvent that's in the stays on ink. And makeup sponges are the same way. So I end up with little uh, inky spots all over everywhere. Now, I didn't cover the inside of this particular folder with my collage pieces because I felt that there was going to be so much uh, the pockets were going to cover it up so much that it would be fine. I did want to ink um, edges and things, and in a minute you'll see I realized that the spaces between the pockets looks very, uh, very light. So I'm going to go in here now and um, just ink up that little bit. And I think we've talked about this before. That stays on ink color is actually called timber brown, but my pad is so old that for some unknown reason, the ink has turned green in it. And um, I had to go and buy a new timber brown pad, which is brown, but I had already started this project with the green, and it makes me happy with a little bit of green edge anyways. Now, when I put pockets on or and building something especially with that's going to take any abuse at all I like to use a combination of glue and tape that is double-sided sticky tape that's an eighth inch wide I'm not as half I don't like the red plastic one as much as I like the white paper one just because it's the white paper one's easier to use and I think just strong enough for what I'm doing um, the red plastic one, you have to cut it. It, uh, it, it just loves to get, um, static in it and get all over everywhere. Uh, you have to spend your time. I can't get them straight to the trash can. So I really prefer the white paper one, but last time I went to the store, I couldn't get the white paper one. So I'm using what I have. Now, what will happen is once I start putting those on, I will go in and, sorry about my head, sometimes I have to see what I'm doing. Um, I will go in at, with the art glitter glue, and um, Lisa has turned me on to that art glitter glue, and I do really like it. Um, it holds quickly. Um, I still like my Tombow Mono Adhesive, but uh, the art glitter glue is really nice. The double-sided tape always comes off, the release tape always comes off better if you uh, really burnish it down good. So now I'm just making sure I have the layout right. They, they were a little bit different in color, and I wanted to be sure I had what I wanted in one place. And here, I'm just putting this art glitter glue, just a little line of it, inside the tape. I also like the fact that you can buy the art glitter glue in a larger container and therefore you can um, refill your glue bottle which is always less expensive that's how i like to do my mod podge and it it just it, it's nice to me that i'm not having to buy brand new plastic bottles every time i don't like the 
the environmental impact of it, and I definitely like the monetary impact of it. I will put a link to some of the things I use, uh, like the art glitter glue, down in the description box. There's my head again. Sorry about that. Now, if you noticed, I put the top and the bottom pockets on first and then went back and centered the middle pocket. Um, sometimes it's easier to get it centered and to get make them look more even. And believe me, they're not perfect. They're off a little bit. Now I'm going in and burnishing down the tape. And we have... One set of pockets all finished up. Now, when I go to do the outside pockets here and the angles, I had pieces left over. And frankly, I could have cut another piece of my cardstock up and made full angled pockets, but I really felt it was just as cute without, and that allowed me to use up my... Um, my pieces that I had left over, which I was happy that, you know, I could use them rather than having pieces that I'm not going to end up using. I had trouble getting it cut. And I think it came out real cute. I was real pleased with it. That's where, for some reason, it didn't, my paper didn't stick. Oh, and more inking. It is much easier to ink something before you glue it down, FYI. And if you ask how that, how I know this, it is, I've been there, done that, forget to, forget to ink it. That poor dauber sponge is really starting to come apart. And I did go ahead and ink all the way around both sides because I'm going to put angled pockets on both outside pages. Get rid of the junk. Ugh. Okay, there we go. Again, I'm going to use the um, double-sided tape. Now, when you double-side tape into something that's curved, because you did see me cut one corner as, as curved. Don't try to get the tape right into that corner. Just use some glue down in there. And more art glitter glue. I was real pleased with how these pockets came out. They, they, um, they worked up real well. There's how they work. And now we're going to get two more. Now, I didn't have enough scraps, so I had to cut up. Oh, maybe I do. I guess I have one page that's a, a scrap, so I'm going to actually use that. And then I'm going to have to cut off of a, a bigger piece. And I didn't worry about what the angle was or anything like that. I just um, made it as tall as the pack, as tall as the folder, and as wide as I wanted. Um, and this one's a little wider on the right hand side, but it's kind of cute that way. So, oh no, more inking. Oh, there's always inking. And cleaning up. <laughs> and more tape. You're going to be really tired of watching tape. I did speed this video up. I'm sorry if that bothers you, but you know, 
there was two hours of video here and you didn't watch me do all the collaging. Um, there was, there's, there's a lot of steps that go into one of these projects and I try to not make you watch all of it. Um, that collage has to dry. So, and I do use a mixture of Mod Podge and glue to do my collages. And it has to dry in between. And when there's um, multiple layers of things, sorry about my phone, guys. So now we have one whole folder all finished up. Yay! And now we're going to work on the next one. Honestly, I had to think about what I was going to do. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. The first pet piece was easy because I knew what I was going to do with um, it because I, I had a plan with exactly what Lisa had done. Then there was some other thoughts on what I was going to have to do with this. So what I decided was I'm going to make one big long pocket with that flap and then I'm going to make another long pocket inside that flap right there. And I had that piece that I had cut the angles off of, so I'm going to just cut a chunk of that off right there. When we get all finished, I'm going to end up making that piece I'm cutting up right now into two pockets. Um, it'll be divided. Okay, and I rounded the corners because it just seemed like they needed to be rounded. And what I've done is I've only made that second piece as deep as the tab at the top. If you take a look at the top, um, that second pocket stops where the tab stops. So here I am measuring um, how, where to put my thumb spots. Uh, I wanted to do that little half moon piece like so and now you see that the bottom pocket or the inside the one underneath the tallest one is going to be two pockets and once again we have to do a lot of inking I'm just hoping my ink pad stays the color it is throughout my um, lap book because there's no way for me to get that color, <laughs> seeing how it, it has to have come from age. Okay, I'm happy. Now I'm going to put tape in. And when I go to put the tape in, in the middle of this piece, I had just made a couple of marks in the center of my piece, and that's going to divide my long piece into two pockets. However, when you go to do the glue, you want to make sure you glue on both sides of that center line. Don't glue on just one side, glue on both sides of it. The reason for the mixture between the tape and the glue is because the tape holds it real well and it sticks it there while your glue dries. But tape is not good to make pockets out of because if you make pockets with tape, what happens is that anything you tuck in that pocket has a bad habit of sticking to that double-sided tape. So by putting the glue just inside, you eliminate that 
spot where it's going to stick, plus you've got the grab of the tape in a big hurry. Okay, so now we're going to make some stacked outside pockets here. And what I'm doing is I'm honestly using up pieces from other places in the journal. And I am these are going to be more like tucks rather than pockets. And part of that is because my pages are small. Um, they are roughly uh, five and a half by eight and a half. Uh, so a sheet of copy paper folded in half, that's roughly how big they are. Um, so I have to have a slightly more access and the pockets being smaller, I end up wanting them to be open on two sides instead of one quite often so that I can get things in and out more easily. It's about access to the pockets. Um, and like I said, I made these pockets the size they are because I had those pieces left over. Um, I did think that it was cute when Lisa did the stacking kind of thing. And by making mine different sizes, it made it look more stacked, which made me, you know, happier with it as far as making it look more like hers. Put your pin back in your glue bottle. Okay. Now we got the other outside. And there again, I'm using pieces that um, I had. I think I trimmed one of them up a little bit um, to make it sort of mid-size. Uh, a couple of those pieces were closer to the same size or same width. And so I ended up um, trimming off a little tiny bit of it just to just to make it look more stepped or or stacked or vary the size. That's what I'm trying to look for. My words are not coming real fast this morning. I wish it, I could um, accomplish something as quickly as this video goes. Um, like I said, there was there was close to two and a half, three hours worth of video. And that is one reason why it's sped up as much as it is. And I hope that my videos have not been real choppy because I have been trying to not um, make you watch me do things repeatedly over and over again. I do know that you have to watch me. Um, ink stuff a lot but and I didn't measure those pockets I just I just looked at them and and said oh this is this is this looks good I like how this is laid out and the top two are more square the bottom one's more rectangular And there again, that was more because of the the pieces I had and just making it look visually okay. So they're really more like tucks than pockets. Okay, we got one more spot and I'm going to put these envelopes there. Um, now, doing envelopes means that you have a lot of collaging to do. Uh, that that takes like three drying steps to do the collaging. Right now, what I'm going to do is put on the little um, fasteners. And what I have done, that's just a sheet of craft card stock and my little half inch circle punch. And what I do is I glue together three little circles for each of the thick uh, tabby things. That's pretty heavy cardstock, but I still end up needing three. It just makes them sturdier. Now, I also cut out one to cover up the brad in the back. I don't like the little 
bitey things inside my envelopes that something can catch on. So once I put the brad through and put the tab in there, um, I do punch it and, and I cover it up with a tab. Uh, with another piece of cardboard. And you didn't have to make circles to do that, but I just go ahead and make a circle to do that. And I didn't cover the side of the envelope that's gonna be against the um, file folder, but I covered everything else. which means that there are three steps to covering that envelope. And that's fine. It's just that it takes a while to do all that, and I cut it all out because I did not think that you needed to watch me collage paper on an envelope. Um, I do use wax paper inside an envelope just to make sure that nothing sticks, doesn't go through. Here I am punching holes in my four little... Um, closures. Realized I'm going to need a couple of the um, single layered ones to, that had ink on them. Little tiny itty bitty brads. Uh, they've been in my stash a long time, but you can buy little brads. Um, don't poke your hole very big because those tiny brads don't need much of a hole. And I didn't measure. I just kind of figured out where it was, about half an inch away from the flap, and put it in there. I, you do want to make sure you get that one inside opened up nice. And sometimes that takes a while. Sometimes it's easier if you open it up just a little bit before you stick it in the envelope. It just goes in a little easier. Um, and here's where I'm going to cover up the brads. I just used some glue and covered up the brads. And unfortunately, you can't really see me get it stuck in there, but it was stuck on there. Sorry. Now, I could have just glued these envelopes down, but I decided, oh, here, I guess I need to make some ties. That's just some wax linen, and uh, what I did was take one long piece, tie it around the one brad, then tie it together as one piece. So it's, it's just folded around the brad, but I did put a, a tie around it. it just it just makes it stay in there better. I got that one a little too long, so I ended up having to retie a knot and cut off some of it. There we go. The other thing to think about is all of my book papers are right side up. So when you go to work on uh, collaging things, you want to make sure you're collaging everything in the right direction. And what I started to tell you a minute ago was that uh, the envelopes could have been put on there, just glued down. I decided I would make them into pockets. As well so not only are they an envelope but then there's a pocket behind the envelope um, I just showed it to you and I decided after the fact that I was going to probably put some um, thumb spots in the other side right there I just I just put the tape on the file folder, and that is because that little corner of the file folder does not go all the way out, and I didn't want to take a chance and have um, tape stuck on my envelope in a place where it wasn't wanted, wasn't needed. We're almost ready to get these done, except for my head bopping in there. Keep bopping my head in the way. This is where I decide I'm going to put those thumb spots on the other side. And I just um, tucked that in. It was a little hard to see. I didn't worry about it too much, but it did make a difference in how the, <laughs> one of them went in the envelope. Um, 
on the access points of it. Now I haven't put the elastics in my um, lab book yet, but I will be soon. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it's, it was fun to make these flip books. And 